This is an update of North America softwood lumber prices and market comment for the middle of May 2024. Hello again, everyone. Ketta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. We are a newsletter tracking FOB mill, sawmill, and wholesaler lumber prices every Friday since 1952. So, Last week when I updated and I let you know that prices were down, they're down again. Um, slightly unusual market dynamic and somewhat interesting because if people who have been watching my videos, you know, through the past year or two, when we're talking about where the prices are now, we try to at this point, disregard those incredible highs, the volatility for uh, 2020 and 2021 and part of 2022, that was circumstances which never happened before. And, you know, normally we would never expect to happen again. So since then, the question has been, where is the new price normal where is the new bottom what is the new level and we have been saying that for that benchmark western spruce pine fir kd two by four number two and better somewhere around 450 somewhere around us 450 dollars per thousand board feet could be 420 depends on the mill uh because that's break even so prior to 2020 that low when the market was soft that price did go to 250 and even a little bit below that so what we're saying is the cost of production for the mills across north america uh have doubled essentially so this is the largest uh outlay of cost that mills have is employment energy and the timber obviously so log prices in uh, the Northwest are up. Most of this year, this benchmark Western Spruce price was very flat at 452. And the market was quite soft in terms of how much volume was being sold. And it didn't seem to pick up where normally February and then definitely into spring, like by now, when building is really starting to get going, prices would be going up. If they don't go up now, they don't normally seasonally, they don't really go up. So when we have this extended, slow, soft demand, and we're already in May, it doesn't, when you look historically, give a lot of confidence that, you know, sales will increase and prices will go up. During this time, the wholesalers, the secondary suppliers, have basically been undercutting the mills. The wholesalers have a bit more flexibility in terms of the load that they're selling. Like the mills normally will be like, just order your four rail cars or your, you know, six rail cars or whatever. Uh, and of, you know, one or two items, two different commodity items. Whereas the secondary suppliers and the wholesalers are much more willing to mix it up. I'll give you half a truck of this you know, take, take some studs off my hands, you know, whatever, smaller bits and pieces. So that's what the customers have been doing. It's just ordering these small bits and pieces that they know they actually need for projects that they're actually doing. Generally in the past, at this time of year, people would just load up. They would just load up their yard with whatever wood they normally need entirely through the summer and keep it in their yard to use later but because things are so uncertain nobody wants to stock up on inventory because they don't know if the price is going to go down because that's happened before as well where you know you had that spring buy prices went up everybody loaded up and then things just went flat and a lot of people were stuck with a lot of wood that they had paid for that was a higher price than what the mills were charging you know so let's say june or july so it's finally gotten to the point where these uh, ongoing secondary supplier undercutting what the mill asking price is that the mills had to reduce 
what they're asking for. And the other reason they had to do that was because the sawmill order file is just not very long, barely two weeks. And some people question even if it's if the production is booked out that far. So it went from this Western spruce two by fours went from 452 to 408 and is now 383. So US $383 per thousand this week and last week. So so two weeks price leveling at this new level, which seems to be below the cost of production that we had sort of figured last year. Now, I'm going to show you a graph real quick, uh, the one that I showed last time of the three items against each other, because I was pointing out that the Southern Pine on the east side price was moving in a different direction. First, it went up like there was a run up, but it seems looking at it now as if those suppliers may have over expected what they could charge. So the correction down brought the Southern Pine prices. The drop was by more than what was going on with Western Spruce and Eastern Spruce. And again, these items are interchangeable in terms of the building code across North America, right? So if uh, anyone is building a standard US, Canadian, European, Japanese house, you need some two by four, you need some studs and you need some panel like plywood or OSB. And uh, the two by fours, whether it's Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce or Southern Pine, they all meet the building code. So the uh, builders are able to choose depending on which one is more convenient for them, they prefer or where the price is at. So when I show you this graph just now of the Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce and Southern Pine on the east side two by four, how those prices change, the trend line is different. I'm also going to add Douglas fir KD two by fours in there which I don't normally do, but it's also moving in a different direction. It's also doing its own thing. And there is a little bit of a different market in that the Douglas fir, which is beautiful, uh, gorgeous wood, only grows on the coast, has uh, very loyal architects and builders on the U.S. Eastern Seaboard, which is, of course, a very high population area. And for custom high-end homes in like Texas, California, Florida a little bit also. So let's look at those and then I'll come back and then I'll show you the usual three graphs of all the six items against each other. So what I want to point out here specifically is that Western Spruce, the red line currently at US $383 per thousand is up 6% from one year ago when it was 360. Whereas the Southern Pine on the east side, the purple line is US 340 per thousand down 33% from one year ago when it was $510 per thousand board feet. So this is what I mean by not only are they moving in a different direction, but the degree to which they are moving is also changing. Here we have that uh, Douglas fir KD, the blue line, which is now uh, $380 per thousand board feet, down 14% from one year ago. All right, and so... Something else happened this week, apart from all of this lumber market and uh, prices, is the softwood lumber duty, the dispute. And so on Monday, on May 6th, the NAFTA panel, now I know that it's not NAFTA anymore, it's the US, uh, Canada, Mexico, but the dispute is under chapter 19 of NAFTA, which is grandfathered, so anyway, so the NAFTA panel made a like 170 page determination of the duties the Commerce Department has applied on Canadian softwood lumber entering into the US. I posted on my website the link to the actual uh, ruling and I put the photos of the five pages of requirement for commerce to explain itself. Okay, so the NAFTA panel has said the U.S. Commerce Department needs to either recalculate or explain a lot of these duties that have been uh, applied in Canada. And they are itemized 
So there is uh, specific ones for British Columbia, Alberta, Quebec, and New Brunswick. And different circumstances and cases, it goes on for five pages. So the timeline is 90 days. And I mean, <laughs> okay, I've been doing this for a while. And the Soft and Lumber Dispute, we are on dispute number five. So it's been going on, you know, decades. 90 days to recalculate what they've been charging for since 2016. Uh, it's going to take a lot longer than that. So usually what happens in this time is the Commerce Department will request an extension because they need to go through all their data. They might have to re-request data from the mills and other um, sources that they use to apply the duty. Uh, and the NAFTA panel will give them extra time, but probably not as much as they asked for. They might ask for six months and get three months, something like that. Regardless, coming up now, we will have some information about what is going to be applied retroactively to the duty that was collected. That's the main point. Okay. So I know it's, I know it's difficult. You have administrative reviews that are done internally within the U S and they determine annually. That's why the duty has been going up and down over the past few years, because it's based on the price of lumber and how much is the uh, harm caused. The duty is the penalty on an importer because there's a harm caused to U.S. industry. Uh, but this must be justified under international law. That's why the NAFTA tribunal is the arbitrator. So if in the coming months, the Commerce Department cannot explain itself or must recalculate these uh, long list of duties that they have been collecting, that means money will be returned. That means money that has that is in the deposit, which the deposit at this point, I have to guess it's like seven billion because in the middle of 2022, I had word that it was 6.1 billion. So that money is being held. That's what has been collected at the border by customs when Canadian lumber enters into the US. So if during the next few months when we find out what happens with this determination, if there is a reduction in retroactively in the duties that were paid, money will be returned. This suggests that there is movement in the settlement of the softwood lumber duty. And that means that the money is going to start. That's, that's all what this is all about is that money that I just said that's been collected gets redistributed. I just real quick, this is the final page of the ruling and where it has the instructions of a uh, requirement to reply within 90 days. It's on my website. What is going on? We don't know, but the next couple of weeks, couple of months is going to be very interesting. I was saying in my previous video, we've already had some fires. There's wildfires happening quite severe. And when it's this early in the year and they're having a hard time putting out the fire, that's very, very, very bad. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fire like at the mill. It can be a fire in a park. It can be a fire by a road. What happens is uh, lockdown and transportation stopped. So a mill might not be where the fire is, but the highway might be, uh, the park might be beside a highway and therefore there's no traffic allowed. And that means they can't get logs in. They can't get their lumber out. Uh, and the storms, the rebuilding and remodeling data is not part of the housing starts data. So, um, if there is enough destruction and there, and that causes a need to buy more wood that might drive up the prices and increase demand totally aside from new housing starts. So let's look at some of the other graphs and I'll explain a little bit uh, where we are right now, right here in the middle of May, that is not at this moment providing clarity is actually making things more confusing, but in the next week, a uh, few weeks and months, it will be. And that's why Madison's publishes every Friday, the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel 
commodity prices. That's what my customers have when they log into the dashboard and they can see all these things that I tell you, the small snapshot, my customers can see it every week when it happens. Okay, so let's see, and then I'll come back and say some more. Okay, and so here is that year over year graph for the benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD two by four, number two and better. As you can see that blue line for this year, it was quite flat at $452 US per thousand board feet. And as I was saying is down now to $383. Uh, however, compared to one year ago, it is up 6%. And compared to two years ago, the same week, that price was $1,110 per thousand. So right now it's down $727 or 65%. Of course, we don't expect to see those incredible highs again. Here we are with the table that I show you often. Again, that Western Spruce price at the top. And then the second one, the Southern Pine, as you can see, did pop up a little bit this week from the dropping that it was making in the past month. Eastern spruce is also flat. Uh, studs are flat. This is a little bit encouraging after you can see uh, further along to the right of this table how those prices are down from one month ago and that softwood plywood that I'm going to do a separate video on that so stay tuned. Here we have the table showing all six of those items which includes the three and the four that I was uh, showing you in the previous graph and again you can see over onto the left in a couple of months uh, by July that scale uh, the incredible high is going to disappear because this is a two-year rolling graph and it's going to look a little bit better indicator of the ups and downs uh, currently looking a little bit flat just because of that incredible scale so high. All right. So what the customers wanted is actually what happened. The prices are lower and now they're buying more like literally this day, May 10. Customers are starting to buy more because they're seeing that this pushback, uh, their resistance to buying at the price that it was and the counter offers that they kept um, saying to the mills that the mills were at that time trying to refuse have now become accepted and sales are increasing. Is it just going to be like 10 rail cars or is it going to start being volumes? That we don't know yet, but we will know when it happens going forward. So if you like what you see here, click subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when we make another video. Click like so this content will be recommended to other viewers and if you need more in the caption is the link to the website where you can fill out the form to request a sample to see that full list of the 500 commodity uh, items that we track and what is the price right now and we will also send you the commentary explaining why those prices changed because just the prices alone doesn't necessarily give enough information and again this is what my customers see when they log into the dashboard every week. And so that's it for now. I'm going to do a video on OSB and plywood because those prices did a whole other thing of their own in the past month. And that's going to need a little bit of explaining.